Good morning, church. I'm, I'm reading from Psalm 3. O oh Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for him in God. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I woke again, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessings be on your people. Selah. Blessing be to the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> That's what I love to hear. Can I just say, it's, it's a pleasure and a privilege and blessing to share with you this morning God's Word. Uh, it, I consider it always a very, very special treat to, to share God's Word and to have these opportunities. And I never take them for granted, but I'm so blessed. And I'm so blessed that you know that I will be sharing that you're still here and haven't got up and left. So that's even a greater blessing. But I do want to welcome all of you that, that are here. Uh, for those of you that may be new to All Souls, we welcome you. Uh, with the love of Jesus Christ. For those of you who are online and those of you who are watching us, uh, maybe for the first time, uh, we're glad that you tuned in. Uh, there is a question I can remember like it was yesterday that someone asked me. It was, a, I, I think, a profound question. In fact, it, it so moved me, I've, I've kind of felt the freedom to ask others, but at the appropriate time. And uh, the question is, is this. What are some of the major challenges you've had to face in your life? Um, that's not a level one or two conversation. That, that literally takes you to, to a whole nother level in your conversation. Um, maybe it's best to wait for at least dessert, you know, in your you know, time together. But this is a good question to ask in your small groups. It's a good question to ask when you come around. And uh, what particular challenge made you cry out? In other words, not only what challenges, but what specifically made you cry out with heartache, disappointment, suffering, worry, anxiety, or, or loss? And can I ask one huge favor? Be encouraged to ask this question, but please do this. If you do, listen. Don't, don't try to think in the back of your mind what your story is or what your experience is, but when you ask this question, just listen. Listen to all that they have to say and, and really just pour into just being attentive to what they say because this, this is profound to allow people to really open their hearts and their lives in this way. And odds are it's going to be in one of these particular areas right here that's going to be affected. In fact, all of us, that's it. All of us can relate to this question. All of us can answer this question. And it's going to possibly fall into one of these areas right up here, either in the academic. And parents, maybe you know this. Maybe it's you, maybe more than the students, because you've seen you know, your child go through the ranks and they've come to graduation. And instead of walking, they have to graduate via screen. Uh, or to go through in that particular area. Career, it could be something. Uh, asking this fellow this, this one question, he was in our men's ministry quite a few years ago, and I'll never forget his answer. He said, you know, the thing that, that really just rocked my world and my life, he says, uh, our, our business was taken over, and I've taken the train into the city. He was from Westchester for over 22 years of his life, and as the firm was taken over, he was called in to the VP's office. And he was told, this is your last day at work. Security will see you outside the door. Things in your desk will be mailed to you. He says, that changed his whole life. It could be a career. It could be existential. It could be you know, trying to find out who you are, the real self in, inside. It could be a failure. It could be a spiritual failure, a moral failure. And they're kind of similar in the sense, a financial 
a health, a loss, a, a love. Maybe it's a marriage that has been a, together for 22 years and all of a sudden it's taken a derail and a, and a divorce in that way or a dating relationship that's gone sour that's caused incredible heartache and hardship or a friendship that's just turned toxic. But I really believe that the, the one that sucks the most life and wind out of the sails of our soul and of our spirit affects this particular area right down here, and that's family. That's, that's for a father or maybe mother to see a, a son that, that's made a decision that could possibly shipwreck his life. It could maybe see a, a daughter that's totally turned her back on the Lord and, and gone in a different direction. Or it could be, and maybe you know what I'm talking about, where you'd like to do a family reunion, but right now some of our family members we're not talking to one another. In fact, we haven't talked to some of our family members for quite a few years. Does that cause heartache? Is that a challenge? There's someone we're gonna be talking about this morning who dealt with this particular area of a hardship with his family. And his name is David. You just heard the scripture uh, that was being read. And we're gonna talk about how God is our shield but we're gonna ask another question, and that is how to triumph when trouble comes our way. And what I'd like us to look at this morning are three points. How to triumph when triumph, uh, trouble comes our way. Number one, speak the lament. In other words, what the trouble is. Number two, recognize the lies and speak the truth. And three, receive God's salvation and deliverance. So those are the three points where we're going. So. If it's any help, you'll know when we're getting close to the end of the message, right? <laughs> the consolation. So let's look at the first point right here. God is our shield. How to triumph when trouble comes our way. Point number one, speak the lament. Speak it, what the trouble is. Now, most of you know that some of the genre in the Psalms are lament. In Psalm number three, the genre is, it's a lament psalm. In other words, some people could say it's a complaint psalm, and that could very well be what it is, but it's a lament. And David is speaking it out. He's, he's just pouring out his heart right here. And as he says, oh Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. So here, here is David speaking the lament. Biblical background, just so that you know where David is coming from. Just a little bit of orientation here. Think of what David has gone through. First of all, it started with his daughter, Tamar. Remember the story? Tamar was a pride and joy of a daughter. She was beautiful. And uh, Amnon was also David's son. And he wanted to have a relationship with her, his half-sister. And the day came and he planned. And when no one was around, he, he raped his half-sister. And I find it hard to believe that a dad would not know about such things, but David did not respond. But another son did, and his name was Absalom. So Absalom stood up for his sister Tamar, went and murdered uh, Amnon, okay? So with all of this going on, I mean, can you imagine? Just put yourself in the lens of life of David, seeing what's going on in your family. And as we talked about challenges, talked about challenges within your family, so imagine the heartache of what a dad was going through, maybe even questioning his own ability. Man, how did I blow it as a dad? How, how did my children get to this extent and do, do these things? So Absalom was banished, he fleed, but in the meantime, in those years that he was away from Jerusalem, he amassed an army. He amassed people to come against David. In fact, it was a sizable army. So as the time came, Absalom with his army, and here, catch this if you will, the very people, as David says, many are rising against me. Part of that many are the very people that fought with David, that stood with David, that supported David. And now they turned their back on him and they have joined ranks with his son Absalom. And now they're coming not just to take his king and his kingdom, but to take his life, if you can imagine. 
And that's what David is writing from. The heartache, the heartache of of being on the flea, the heartache of of running for your life, the heartache of of seeing your, your children and the son that you love wants now to take your own life. Is that a challenge? That's a heartache, big time. But David is speaking this out. You know, I, I think we all love the Psalms. The Psalms have blessed us, haven't they? They, they speak to us in a, in a way like sometimes no other scripture can. They, they breathe a sense of, of intimacy. They, they, they just, just canvas the whole sense of emotion and heart and passion, don't they? And, and I think it's, it's, it's a book that everyone, young and old, male and, and female, that we can all kind of relate to. It's powerful. Well, here, here's my side note on it. It was written by a man. Men, there's hope for us. So when your wife says, you're having a little trouble, difficulty in, in communicating how you feel, David had no problem at all. And he had no problem speaking it out loud, spoken by a man. But the, the, the last point I want you to catch here is how David spoke. He spoke the lament. And I just have to give it like a, a little editorial right here. It's, it's a side note. It's, it's a personal perspective. And I'm sharing it with you. And I, I do welcome your feedback. I believe we're living in a culture that silences lament. Did you hear that? And what I mean by that is that a few years ago, I, I don't know where this phrase came from. In fact, I even almost found myself saying it this morning. That when someone would, you know, maybe answer the question, hey, how are you doing this morning? Well, my, my light, wife, she got her hours cut back. That means we've lost our, our health benefits. Uh, I don't know how we're going to cover because we've got some major medical expenses, but it's all good. Have you ever heard that phrase, that, that cliché? It never used to be around. It just seemed like it popped up within <laughs> the last few years. But people talk about a hardship that they go through. It's, it's something that maybe they're, they're grieving over. And, and then they always preface it at the end. It's all good. It's all good? If you, if, am I the only one that's heard? Have anyone ever heard that? Have you ever said it? I have. I've been guilty. It's all good. And I found myself, well, that kind of ends the conversation. You say that, that's it. No more to be said. But I think how important it really is. That's why I go back to that initial question at the beginning. What challenges have you gone through? Would you be willing to listen to someone pour their heart out and tell you? David did. He spoke it. One more point. The reason why I believe that there's a silence or a suppression on expressing lament. Have you ever heard someone pour their heart out to you? I mean, that's really in tears. And they go on. They're telling you the hardship that they're going through. And what do they say at the end of it? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to take so much of your time. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to say all of this. I'm so sorry. People end up apologizing for expressing their lament. Have you heard that before from people? What, what is with this? And David is so free to speak it out before God. I hope that we can be a people, I hope that we can be a church that can kind of crash this culture to be people that knows how to listen to people's lament and to hear their pain without trying to offer helps and suggestions, but to hear their heart. And that's what David did. He spoke the lament. And can I encourage you? And maybe... Mamie, guys, I need to speak to you. This is a challenge for us. We don't do this so well. In fact, sometimes it's very, very hard for us because we like to bottle these things in. And if we do begin to express it, yes, man, I'm talking to you as well as me. You know, we think we know what the answer is. <laughs> we, we've got a cure. Or we try to minimize it. Or we're the masters at saying, it's all good. It's all good. 
man, we, we need to learn from David of how important it is to speak our lament and learn it starting with God. Letting him hear your heart. He wants to hear it. And I'd love to see the day come when we can do that with one another and in our groups and supporting one another in hearing it. And I hope you come up after the service and you tell me we're doing that. We already are. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The second point, moving on. So how to triumph when trouble comes our way? We're going to speak the lament. We're, we're going to speak it out, whatever that trouble is. And, and again, I would even encourage you to journal. If you don't journal, I never used to journal. In fact, if you know me very well, I hate writing. I hate writing. You know, like annual reports that we had to do a few weeks ago. Oh, that's like torture for me. But the one thing I've learned, there is such a freedom of expression and journaling. And I really would encourage you, if you've never done it, it's a great way to begin to express your lament. But number two, <clears throat> recognize the lies and speak the truth. So continuing on in Psalm, it said, Lord, how many are my foes? How many are rising up against me? You, you kind of get the emphasis of many here. <laughs> the many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for him in God. And, and that's, that's the lie right there. That's the lie that comes. Now, I don't know how it is in, in your life, but I, and, and in fact, you're probably going to commit me after this message, but I, I have this little voice inside that speaks to me. Do you ever, ever have that little voice that speaks? And does, does it ever compliment you and, and tell you you did a great job? Does it ever tell you that, wow, what you said was incredible? Does it ever tell you and affirm you? It doesn't me. In fact, you know, I, I was reading statistics on, on that voice, and they say that the statistics are that inner voices will be 70%, if not more, in a negative tone. Well, imagine you've got an inner voice that isn't so positive, but David had an outer voice, and outer voices that were telling him, that says, there, there's no salvation for you. There'll be no deliverance for you, David. You think God is going to step in and move and, on your behalf? You're crazy. Look where you're at right now. Look at the mess your life is in, and you think God is going to do something? Imagine hearing it on the outside as well as the voice on the inside. Can I tell you, beware of the lie. Beware of that voice that speaks to you, that tried to shame you, that tried to guilt you, that tried to condemn you. Beware of the voice that speaks to you that's a lie and call it that. To say, that's a lie, I refuse to accept it in the name of Jesus Christ and I will receive only the truth. Because David recognized the lie. Because look what he says in verse 3. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory, the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. And I lay down and I slept. I woke again for the Lord. He sustained me. And I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who set themselves up against me. So when we talk about recognizing the lie and speaking the truth, can I just encourage you, and, and some of you may be, be doing this, to combat the lies that you hear, is make what we call proclamation statements. And this is right out of the psalm right here. These are what we call proclamation statements. And what I do is I, I say them, and I say them aloud, because it, remember when David says, I cried aloud to the Lord? I have to say it so my ears hear it. And so when I, I make a statement, because the scripture says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word. So if this is the word, and I'm saying it, it's going to help me to believe where my faith may falter. For example, when it says, Lord, you are my shield. David is declaring, in spite of the lie, Lord, you are my shield. And think of this coming from David. Think of the history in his life. Remember when he was small and he had one of the great challenges of his life by, by facing Goliath? Remember that? And remember when Saul said, you're going to need some help going into battle? 
So here's my shield, here's my sword. And what did David do? Well, I hope, you know, he said he didn't want it. <laughs> I have a greater source of shield and security in God. So in other words, you can keep it. I've got a shield because, Lord, you are my shield. And God has been a shield all through his life. And David is just not speaking from wishful thinking. This is experiential, you know, faith that, that has developed in David to say, Lord, you are my shield. You over and over have proven yourself faithful in this area. So it's important to declare, Lord, you are my shield. It's also important to declare, Lord, you are my glory. And think of this, all the, the glory that, that David had as a, as a king ruling over his kingdom. Now he's a man on on the flea, flee for his life. But yet he was only concerned for one thing, and that was the glory of the Lord. Not my glory, not that I'm not king anymore, but God, it's all about you. For Lord, you and you alone are my glory. But then he goes on to say, Lord, you are the lifter of my head. Can I just say this is a powerful, powerful statement. And I know... You know, you better say yes to this, but don't raise your hand. If you ever really, just really been discouraged, have you ever faced defeat in your life? Have you ever tasted of what depression's like and to go through it? Um, I have. And, and especially when all of them hit you at, at once, can I tell you I can relate to what David says about having a downcast spirit? It's like you do, you, you go through life and where's your focus? It's, it's down, it's looking down. It's interesting is, do we have anyone, that, a deer hunter or hunts deer here? Because um, if you are, you know what a tree stand is and what a tree stand is used for in deer hunting. And when hunters hunt deer, they'll put a deer stand up, up in a tree and they'll go up and you know what they'll tell you why they do that? Because deers don't look up. And I think of what the scripture says, that where does my help come from? It comes from the hills. I look up. But I'm going to tell you, there's going to be times that I feel like, Lord, I want to look up. I, I, I can't. Right here, Lord, I am so glad you are the lifter. You are the lifter of my head. Does that do anything for your soul to hear that? Lord, you are the lifter of my head. Lord, you are the one that gets my eyes off of this whole mess. You are the one that lifts my eyes to where they really need to be on you. Because right now, I don't think I can do it myself. But Lord, you are the lifter of my head. You know, I, I envision and I see this happening where Jesus was talking to the woman caught in adultery. Remember that story? And remember when everyone was pressing in to, to stone her and, and Jesus has this conversation, all right, you don't, you know, if you're sinless, wail away. And then everyone leaves. And I imagine him there with this woman and, and being downcast. And I'm sure her spirit was looking down and, and discouragement and defeat. And I can just see Jesus, this is who our God is, reaching down under her chin picking it up so that they can look eye to eye and to say, go, your sins are forgiven. That's the God that we have, the lifter of our, our head. Lord, also in verse four, you are the one who answers my cry for help. And David says he does it out loud. And God is the faithful one who hears, he isn't distracted but he's there and attentive to everything that's said. It's important to declare that. Lord, you are the one who answers my cry. Declare, Lord, you are the one that sustains and stands with me. And there are gonna be times when you feel like you're the only one, even your whole family. In this case, it seemed like David was down to bear ranks, those that were with him. But he still declared, Lord, you are the one that sustains and stands with me, even when no one else will, you will. You know, you think about all, all what David must have gone through emotionally. Just, just think of maybe the, the shame 
you know, again, as, as a father, think of the shame as, as a political leader, that, to, to think that right out before everyone to see, your own son is, is willing to take your life, and, and his own friends that once stood with him are now coming against him. And to think that David could say, in, in spite of it all, God, all that really matters, you'll never leave me. No matter what I go through, no matter what I face, no matter what, you will always be there. You will always be there. And I can count on that. Lord, you are my peace and my rest. You know, there might be some of you here that might need to declare this tonight, maybe before you go to sleep, because the scripture says that David slept. You know what it's like to sleep when someone's willing to take your life and it's your own son? I can't imagine. But I don't think I'd be sleeping for a week, at least minimum. And I know what it's like to go those, those sleepless nights. But I also know what it's like to turn to God. And, and I would encourage you, if you're going through those times, please remember, speak and, and profess this. And sometimes I have to say it two and three times. But Lord, you are my peace. You are my rest. And I can wake up in the morning saying, God, thank you. Thank you that you have been there to give me an incredible night's sleep. So therefore, I will not fear Lord, you are my deliverer. You are my savior. You know, that's important to declare. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Could I ask you to do something with me just so we get into the habit of doing it? Could we start at the top and go through this and declare these truths together? Let's start. Number one, Lord, you are my shield. Number two, Lord, you are my glory. Number three, Lord, you are the lifter of my head. Next, Lord, you are the one who answers my cry for help. Next, Lord, you are the one that sustains and stands with me. Next, Lord, you are my peace and rest. Next, I will not fear. Next, Lord, you are my deliverer. And the last, you are my savior. Do you believe that this morning? You declared it. I'm trusting you believe it with all of your heart. Boy, this would be a good place to end the message, wouldn't it? But there's one more. And this is the most important, to receive God's salvation. You just declared, Lord, you are my Savior. But I, I want to speak, and, and maybe there's someone here this morning, or maybe there's someone online. You're, you're here, you come to church, you can recite John 3, 16, for God so loves the world that he gave his only son. You know all of those things, but you've really never personally entered into a relationship with Jesus Christ. You don't know him personally. You know about a God, you know what he's capable of doing it, but you've never personally encountered him in your own life. Just really want to ask you this morning, would you be willing to consider that John 3, 16 needs to be read this way, for God so loved you. God loves you. Hear that. Don't let it just fly over your head or your heart, but receive this this morning. He knows who you are. Do you realize that looking at the condition and plight that we were in, that Jesus had to go and die on Calvary's cross for our sin, that he volunteered for that mission. He did it willfully. Again, he volunteered. No one forced him because he was thinking of you. He was thinking of me because he loves you. Would you be willing to say, I, I don't know, I, I've never really gone that far. I, I, I think, you know, I don't know what that looks like. You'd just be willing to say, but I, Jesus, I open my heart and I receive you to start a personal relationship with you. But maybe, again, you might have questions that say, but how, how does that really happen? How does it really work? Um, can I encourage you, please come and talk to us. One of the staff one of the session, uh, how you can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. 
We're here to help you that journey. And the last, for those of you who are here that may have kind of wandered, and you know what I mean by that, your heart, your spiritual heart is, is drifted. And maybe these statements that you just read are, are great, but there again, they're so distant because of where you have been spiritually. Wouldn't this be a good morning just to come back and to say, you know what, Lord? I, I want to have the heart that's after you, as David said. It's a man after you with all of his heart. I want to be that man. I want to be that woman this morning that loves you with all of their heart. And Lord, forgive me for allowing all the other things to come in, to take residence, to be literally trespassers in my heart and in my mind that's kept me from being fully devoted and following you. You'd be willing to cast those off this morning to do that, to follow him? I think this would be a, a good time and a good point to pray. Would you pray with me? <sighs> Father, we're so grateful for your word. We're so grateful for the example of, of David, Father, who had an incredible perspective and vision of who you were because he lived in relationship with you, Father. And Lord, that's what we want to have this morning. We want to come to know you as our shield. We want to come to know you as our glory. We want to come to know you, Father, as, as the lifter of our head. Lord, we want to declare boldly as David, you, you are my peace. You are the one that stands with me. You are the one that provides me rest through the night that I wake up refreshed and renewed. You are the one that eases my heart and my mind of all burdens that, that Lord, just tie me down. You are the one that frees me from the lies that try to really detour and detract my life. Father, from where it should be. But Lord, we declare what a great and mighty God that you are. And Lord, we reaffirm our faith. We renew our love. And Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we declare that Lord, you are our God. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. And we praise you and thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.